Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Got a good one for you today. I'm going to show you how to automatically load multiple images for products or customers or whatever you want at one time in Microsoft Access. Today's question comes from Megan in Chandler, Arizona, one of my Platinum members. Megan says, I have to store multiple pictures for each of my products. And right now I'm just putting in the file names one at a time like you show in your images video. However, this is very time consuming. Is there a way that I can select just a bunch of images and say, these are all for product XYZ and have them all load up automatically? It would save me hours every day and I will be in your debt, great Klingon warrior, Kapla. Now, the Star Trek reference alone will get you a video. And being a Platinum member, well, that just bumped your question up to the top of the list. So let's talk about it. Okay, in my images video, I show you how to display images in your forms and reports by just simply putting the file name in a text field and using the image control. We do not use attachments. We do not store images inside our databases. All right, they bloat your database and they're bad for you. Go watch this video for all the information you need on that. Now, in the extended cut, I teach you how to make a browse button. So you can click on that, pick a file, and it puts the file name in there for you automatically. Today, I'm going to show you a trick where you can set up an import folder, and you can drop all the pictures that you want into the import folder, and then click a button, and they'll all get loaded into your database on whatever record you want. Let me show you a sample. All right, so today what we're going to do is we're going to take a customer form. We're just going to drop pictures in the contacts. Let's pretend this was a product record, right? You can have another table that's related to it where you can have multiple products, okay? And then those will be displayed in here. So what we're gonna do is we're going to set up an import folder. We'll make a button so you can click on it and it will open up that import folder. It's just a folder underneath your database folder, right? We're gonna call it the import folder. Now, any pictures that you wanna import into the database, you put in this folder. So I'll just go grab some. All right, I copied these pictures into the import folder. And now I'm going to go back to the database. I'm going to hit import photos. And look at that. Ba -ba 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 -boom. They all came in automatically. Right? There's this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. And they're all stored in the contacts under this customer. Right? Whatever images were in that folder are just immediately tagged in here. These aren't actually imported into the database. But we've stored the location in the contact table. So if you come down here. Here they are, right? And there's their locations. So we're gonna copy them to an images folder under the database, rename them and store them, all right? So they're under here in images. There they are with the unique file names now, okay? And you can use them in your database and they're attached to the customer right there. And this could be, like I said, this could be a product, this could be students, this could be whatever you want, documents, doesn't matter, right? So that's what we're gonna cover in this series. Let's talk some prerequisites first. What do you need to know before we get started today? Well, it's going to be a developer level video. So you're going to need some VBA. Obviously, go watch that images video that I mentioned earlier, right? Now, if you've never done any VBA programming before, don't worry. It's not scary. Go watch this video. It'll get you started. Everything you need to know in about 20 minutes. We're going to use a while loop to loop through the file. So make sure you understand while loops. We're gonna use some of the string functions, left, right, mid, in, string, those guys, make sure you know these. We're gonna use in string reverse. That's finding something from the end of a string. We'll use that to find the file extensions. We're gonna use if then statements, make sure you know how to use these. And we're also gonna use a select case statement. So brush up on this one. We're gonna use a record set to add the file to the contact table. All right, so make sure you know how to use record sets. These are all free videos. They're on my website. They're on my YouTube channel. Go watch all of these if you're not familiar with any of this stuff and then come on back. This is going to be a developer develop. This is a, this is a higher end developer bit of code we're doing today. So for those of you who keep telling me you want more advanced stuff, well, here's some advanced stuff. I usually cover this kind of stuff in my developer course. Now, we're also going to use some basic file input output, reading through files in a folder, that kind of stuff. I don't have tech help videos for this kind of thing. I'm going to show you what you need to know today in today's video, but if you want to learn more about these things in Access Developer 30 and 31, I cover basic file input output, reading and writing text files, 
file and folder navigation, copying files, and lots more. So I'll put links to these down below as well if you want to learn more about these things. All right, we're going to start with a copy of my Tech Help free template. This is a free database. You can download a copy off my website if you want to. I'm going to call this one Load Multiple Images, and we're going to put this in its own folder. Now, I'm just going to put mine on my desktop. So new folder, we'll call this uh, Images Database or whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to put this guy in there. Okay, now inside of this folder, there we go, it opened up on my other screen. We're going to create two other folders. One is going to be our images folder, and that's where we're going to store images that are actually logged in the database. Okay, remember, we don't store files in the database itself. We put them in a folder, and we just store the reference, the file and path to that image in the database itself. Then we're going to set up another folder called our import folder, new folder, import folder. And that's where we're going to put files that we have not yet inputted or imported into the database. And we'll just drag them all, drop them in there like you just saw me do a minute ago, hit a button and they'll all get copied up to the images folder and then deleted and then logged and then everything will be hunky dory. Okay. All right. And yes, for those of you that are asking, can't you just use a button to select multiple files with the file dialog? Yes, you can. It's a lot more advanced. I find this method's a lot easier, actually. Uh, and I will cover that in the extended cut for the members after we're done with what we're doing here. But this works easy, and it's the, the programming for this is not that difficult. All right, so let's open up our database. And the first thing we need to store is a location to keep track of the image file name. So... I got customers and contacts already set up in here. What you want is if you want to have multiple pictures associated with something, you're going to want to have another related table to store all of that something in, right? If you're doing a customer's profile picture and it's just one, you can just store the file name in here, right in the customer table, which is what we did in the images video. But if you've got multiple profile pictures or multiple pictures that you want to associate with this customer, you're going to need a second related table, right? So if this is products, you can make a product images table and you can store 15, 20, 1,000 pictures for that product in the related table. I've already got customers and contacts set up. So rather than waste all this time reinventing the wheel, we're just gonna store the pictures related to this customer in the contacts table, okay? So let's go to the contact table, design view. And right down here on the bottom, I'm gonna put my image. Don't use the word image. Image is a reserved word, just like picture is a reserved word. You wanna try and avoid those as possible. If you're not sure if something is a reserved word, just put my in front of it. Like instead of date, right? Dates are reserved, my date or whatever, <laughs> right? All right, save this and I'm gonna go, um, let's go into here and just put some sample data in one record. I'm gonna put in my image for me I'm gonna put in here, I'm just gonna put in uh, picard.jpg. And I'm gonna throw a file called picard.jpg in the images folder, just so we can see that it's working, okay? All right, here's my images folder, and I'm gonna grab a copy of picard that I just happen to have handy. We're gonna drag and drop that into here. And there we go. So now you'll see that that's in there. When we build the form, you'll see that it's working. All right, next up, let's open up the contact form where we're gonna store our pictures, or we're gonna display the pictures, I should say. And we don't need the notes to be quite that big for this example, so I'm gonna shrink up notes just like that. We're gonna put a nice big image right here in the footer. So we're gonna go to form design and find the image control, which is this guy. Do not use this guy. This is different. This is an unbound object frame. Don't use this guy. That's a bound object frame. Those are different completely. You want this guy, image, all right? Draw out a box down here, like about so. You're gonna cancel this. We just want an empty image frame right there. Okay. If you wanna give it a background color, I like to give it a background color so that people can tell something's there like that. All right, that's just empty. Let's open up the properties for it. I don't like image eight. Let's call it my image object. All right, so we don't confuse it with the actual image field value. Now for the control source, I want to use my image, which is a field in the table underneath this, right? My image. But I need to tell the database to look in the database folder and then go into the images folder under that to find my image. All right. How does that look? I'm going to zoom in so you can see this better. Shift F2. Okay. 
it's going to be equals current project dot path. That's the current database folder and backslash images. That's my, my images folder, right? Backslash oh, close quotes and then my image, the field name. So it's going to be whatever the path is to the database, right? C colon backslash users backslash Rick backslash desktop backslash whatever the database folder name is slash images slash Picard. All right, that's going to be put all together and it's going to be in the control source to this guy right there. All right, save it, close it, open it back up again, and there's Picard, right? Because I got Picard.jpg in the table. So that's easy. This is so, so far, nothing new. We've done all of this before in the images video. Now we're actually ready to start building our buttons and put some code in to pull in the, the multiple pictures and put them in different records up in here. And we'll start that in tomorrow's video. So tune in tomorrow, same bad time, same bad channel. Yeah, we got all of the prep work done. Sometimes the prep work can take a few minutes, right? But you gotta get the database set up properly. And of course, if you're a member, you can watch right now because I'm gonna post it as soon as I'm done with recording it in just a few minutes. But that's gonna be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you tomorrow for part two. A special thank you and shout out to our diamond sponsor, Juan Soto with Access Experts Software Solutions. They're manufacturing experts specializing in Microsoft Access and SQL Server. Juan is a 13-time Microsoft Access MVP. Check them out at accessexperts.com. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the video's up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming as long as you keep watching them I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing free four hours go watch it and okay okay a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four-hour course so I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes and no I didn't just put the video on fast forward <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well now if you like level one level two is just a dollar that's it one dollar and that's another whole like 90 minute course Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. Okay. Want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course.
While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the Tech Help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.